creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living today. We're going to learn how to create beautiful textures on fabric. We'll see real examples of how to dress 10 pounds thinner and we'll demonstrate making fringe flowers by machine embroidery. One of my guests is Barbara Crawford and she's going to demonstrate how to use catch and release to create texture on the surface of almost any fabric. Her business is Crawford Designs and Sunset Galleries in Amarillo, Texas. Another guest is Nancy Nix Rice, and she's a wardrobe consultant and author from St. Louis, Missouri. Nancy's going to demonstrate on herself how to make changes that will result in a slimmer and more flattering look. And we'll begin the show with Laura Waterfield, and she's the owner of Laura's Sewing Studio in Tomball, Texas. Laura will demonstrate several types of fringe flowers that can be made with an embroidery machine. Laura, it's amazing. You told me you have a full-time job and you just do all these beautiful things on the side. But you're always coming up with new projects, beautiful things to share with us. And I appreciate you coming today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is uh, Fringe Flowers, I believe. And how did you decide to start doing that? Well, I like to always add some texture or some dimension to machine embroidery. Machine embroidery is kind of a flat you know, process, and I like to add some texture to it, bring it up off the fabric so it'll show up more. And you've been doing machine embroidery for a long time, haven't you? I, yes. <laughs> so you just sort of learn to enhance it. Right, uh-huh. Well, this is behind glass, of course, but, and we'll show some other samples, but these little flowers with the edges, that's what we're really talking right. about. Little, little fringe flowers, uh-huh, uh -huh, little uh, cattails, these are other little French flowers, some little loopy French flowers, and mm -hmm. some more little stubbly kind of uh, French flowers. Those are beautiful. It's nice to have it where you can put it on the wall and, and actually enjoy it. Right. And then this is this just is, a wall hanging. Right. I just made individual squares, cool little quilt squares, and you can see these have little fringy flowers. You can, loopy flowers, mm -hmm. and little stubbly. You can feel these. When you have a quilt, you can just touch and feel. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And you can hang up. And your you quilt can make across. them different lengths of fringe? Um, or are they all pretty much standard? Well, well, it's the, it depends on how I digitize it. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, uh -huh. how, how long I made those satin stitches. Yeah, you okay. can make them longer with longer satin stitches. This These is one pretty. that uh, I made this for our dentist, Dr. Hart. And uh, this has real long fringe. And you can see it has uh -huh. a flower behind it, plus fringe in, this, in the center, oh, plus so really extra dimensional. center. Yes, uh-huh. Okay. And this is just um, this is how the squares are sewed with a little quilt over there mm -hmm. with a little loopy fringe. So you do all of this before you ever piece it all together. That's exactly mm -hmm. right, uh-huh. This is where I've stitched on different color fabric. I think black fabrics really make your um, threads and your fabrics really and stand colors. out. Uh -huh. to put it's it on beautiful. black. It's a background. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, now yeah. you're going to show us how to do this. And right. it's easy, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is one that's almost done. I've actually added some pearl centers to these little flowers oh, on this. See making this from my knees. Oh, uh -huh. And the only one, see, this is how the fringe flowers look before you release the, the fringe. It's kind of it's just, blah looking, isn't it? Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. There's just real long satin stitches, and they have stitches in the center that kind of hold that side of the stitch down. Mm -hmm. Now, from the back side, I'm going to use my scissors. And you can see the white thread here is my bobbin thread. And I'm just going to oh. cut my bobbin thread just like that. Cut it all the way around. And you'd want some sharp little scissors that cut right, right to the tip, don't you? Right. And you want to make sure that you don't cut your fabric. Uh -huh. And after you've cut your thread, um, bobbin thread, you need to get those bobbin threads off of there. Little pokies. I use my tweezers and kind of oh. pull all those little uh -huh. white threads see. off. Uh -huh. And then, oh, it takes a little bit. You want to brush all those off. Then from the front side, I'm going to use my tweezers and just pull these loops up. It works better if you pull up just a few at a time. I see. See, and then there, releases oh, your fringe. I see, yeah. that's amazing. And after you've released your fringe, then I'm gonna uh, put the little pearls in the center. You hand stitch those on. Uh -huh. And when you when you frame a project like this, you have to make sure that you have enough space between this and the glass so that it's not touching. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. So you do need some depth if you're going to be right, framing Right, right. Uh -huh. And where I had this frame, they added some little spacers in there so the glass is as a there's a little distance between that and the, the fringe. Otherwise, it flattens it, and there's no reason to have done all this extra beautiful You're work exactly on it. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. <laughs> well, this right. looks like it would be a lot of fun to try. Thank you so much for showing us how. Thanks for having me.
Nancy, thank you so much for being here. Um, we're going to cover lots of things today, and I've seen you dressed to the hilt, and I have to admit, this segment is going to be on how to look 10 pounds thinner. So is is this the after or the before? Well, this is definitely the before. <laughs> and I wanted to start with three really classic pieces, a basic little slim skirt, a plain shell underneath, and an easy cardigan, things that every woman probably has yes. in her wardrobe. Um, and that are perfectly fine pieces, but I want to show you how some little changes can make a huge difference in not only how polished, but also how pounds off pounds a person off. can uh -huh. look. Okay, well, let's so, see you work your magic. Well, let's start from the bottom up. Okay. Um, we've started out with a really comfortable little loafer, a perfectly nice shoe, but the downside of it isn't really just the fact that it's a low heel, that it's flat, but that it's what we call a high vamp, which means that the tongue on the front of that shoe covers almost half my foot. Oh, it does. Uh -huh. Look at the difference when we slide into a low vamp shoe that exposes more, more foot, foot. Uh -huh. and all of a sudden your legs look two to three inches longer. What would we give for two to three ex inches mm -hmm. of extra height? So that's a great starting point. So think from the bottom up. We're gonna work right from the bottom up. The next thing we're going to look at is our slim skirt. Like the majority of slim skirts in the world, it fits out over my hips and falls straight. Uh -huh. But look how much sleeker the look becomes when I pretend that we've tapered the side seams. Now you and I both know that I'm actually holding the back of the skirt and uh -huh. that's not what we're suggesting. But if a person who sews herself or someone who doesn't can have her dressmaker angle those Taper side seams in. just slightly and all of a sudden again your whole lower body looks sleeker. Now uh -huh. I can't do the rest of the segment holding my no. skirt behind <laughs> my back so I'm going to let you clip that for me real okay. quickly so it'll stay in that position. And while you're doing okay. that, I'm also going to lose the wide waistband on this skirt. This one Looks happens, happens to look. be a fake, mm -hmm. but what it does is shorten up mm -hmm. your upper torso. Look how much better when we convert to a skirt mm -hmm. with a narrow waistband or no waistband at all. So now you have more length through that uh -huh. middle part of your body. Oh, I'll yeah. let you have we'll a waistband. Disregard that. Another <laughs> sneaky little trick is just to push oh. up the I think that looks so much better. On that sweater, by exposing more skin here, again, your whole body looks taller and trimmer. Now, these sleeves are staying pushed up really comfortably, but that's not mm -hmm. always the case. No. That's why I love these little I sweater sleeve bands. They're like garters for your sleeves, and they simply slide right up just above your elbow, and then the excess fabric from mm -hmm. where you pushed it up slides down completely covers the band and you mm -hmm. can stay comfortably and flatteringly pushed up all day long. Well, I'd never thought about the fact that it does make you look slimmer. It just elongates the whole look, I think if you have short it? arms, it's just an awkward length if they're long and they come down too long. So I always tend to push them up. <laughs> well, and any sleeve that's too long and comes down over your hand pulls people's focus downward on your body. You always want the focus flowing upward, partly to focus on your face mm -hmm. and partly because it elongates every bit of you. Now, another really sneaky trick for looking oh. taller and trimmer is shoulder pads. I agree. Now, you may have heard, and many people have, that shoulder pads are supposedly out. What that means is that in current fashion, when you buy a tailored jacket, it doesn't have those gigantic oversized shoulder pads um, that look like something off that Dynasty TV show. <laughs> what we're talking about is a little subtle shoulder support that's really a silhouette balancing tool. These now, are would you put this under the cardigan foam. or under your... your Okay, excuse Excellent me. Excellent <laughs> question. Um, it depends. If you're going to leave the cardigan on all day, mm -hmm. you get the absolute best stick'em by having fabric on oh, both fabric. sides of the I shoulder see. pads. Uh -huh. But the texture of these is similar really to Velcro, so it adheres to fabric. So if I oh. wanted to be able to take my cardigan off, let's say just, oh, for instance, that I was going through security at the airport uh -huh. and I didn't want to whip off my cardigan and have two shoulder, shoulder pads, pads flying across <laughs> the security checkpoint, I certainly could anchor but, them under oh. that underlayer sweater as well, uh -huh. absolutely. That is amazing what it does to you. And for those of us who do need that little extra width, I can see how that makes 
it, it creates that line coming down. Absolutely, so many women are really under the mistaken belief that they already have these huge shoulders and they want to minimize them. Look at any supermodel on the runway. That Very silhouette nice is all about this wonderful squared shoulder. Now you don't want to look like a fullback, but these give you a really mm -hmm. natural curve and just lift and, you and don't balance see the them. silhouette, don't mm -hmm. they? They certainly I, they're, do. I think they're one of those don't leave home without them items. <laughs> I do too. Now if we That's really beautiful. want to anchor the focus up high around our face, either a great necklace or a great scarf is a terrific way to do that. I have a scarf handy today. This is so let what, me, about 60 inches? This is a 60 okay. inch rectangle and I'm just going to twist it a little bit, tuck the ends through. Now do you see oh. how much more forcefully all your attention ends Goes up, up to the face. at the top? Uh -huh. And we want to punctuate that with a pair of statement earrings, which simply means an earring that it's bold enough that it commands focus. They don't have to be the size of a hubcap, but you <laughs> want them to be visually dominant within the look. So now all the focus is landing up here. All of this is sleeked down. Oh, and I'm hoping that you you'll look like feel a different person. That I look at least <laughs> 10 pounds thinner, right? Uh -huh. And a little bit more chic as well. I heard a lady say one time, and of course this was back when shoulder pads were really in and they mm -hmm. were the bigger ones. She said, for every pair of shoulder pads you wear, it takes five pounds off. It does and make I thought, a That's huge a, difference. Mm -hmm. it, it does. It really, really does. So I hope people will get over that mistaken belief that they're somehow 80s and not what you want to uh -huh. do. You only want to do shoulder pads if you have any issue about your body from the shoulders down. If there's anything in here mm -hmm. that you wish you had a little less of or honestly that you wish was back up where it used to be. Shoulder pads <laughs> yeah. will do it every time. That's great. Those are great tips and those are just some of the tips that are in your book, looking good. And that's, that's right. what we all strive to do is looking good at work or at home or pleasure or whatever. Thank you very much, Nancy. It was my pleasure. Barbara, thank you so much for coming. Every time you come, I learn so many new techniques yeah. and things. And <laughs> you said what really brought about this surface texture that you're going to show us was from being in uh, workshops and things, and people were just amazed. It was like, oh my gosh, how did you how do, did that? do that? <laughs> yes, yep, and it, that's our seminar. We have lots of different techniques, and these are two that we're going to show uh -huh. you today: uh, texturizing or changing the surface. So maybe you have some old clothing that you don't want to throw out. Maybe they have a hole in it. Maybe they just got older and it was mm -hmm. some way to, to vamp it up and have a new outfit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You could do that. So old or new or ready-made or, ready or something made. you're going you're to make. You're working on a pattern, yeah. That's handy. Or just something to play with. I think when you start working with it, you get inspired and you start coming uh -huh. up with your own things. Right. You just need me to open the door. Well, I'm glad you've done that okay. for us. You've done all that part <laughs> for us. You're using something called wool pebbles. Wool I've pebbles. never heard of that. Aren't they cool? Now, I hand dye these. Oh, wow. All right, these come off of the garments right uh, as they're being woven. Oh my gosh, So they're just pieces, just... they're just pieces, but they add so much texture to the surface. And, and you, you hand dye these, you said? I do, I hand dye them. Wow. And I've I don't know if those. you can get them anywhere else, but... Uh, but you have them on your website? I, I do. Uh -huh. I do. Oh, great. And I have a couple of pieces to show you so it doesn't look so obscure while I'm working. And well, that's it... the collar I put on the sweatshirt, all the different colors you can mix in, and everything's done with free motion sewing. Now, do you put a net or anything you over this? You use a water-soluble stabilizer. Oh. Okay. Which I use Solvi, uh -huh. which I've done a piece here. And then you're using that, if you don't have a special machine for like you're not a quilter, they have the free motion, your machine probably has a darning foot. It's the circle uh -huh. one. Yeah. Okay, that's you what can you just move around. It's actually a lot of fun. You don't really have to have any direction. This is really Isn't it gorgeous? pretty. gorgeous? Uh huh. And so you can see the free motion sewing underneath it. Oh, uh huh. It's very quick. Really, it's kind of pretty too. It is, it <laughs> is, depending on your thread. Yeah, uh huh. That's right. But you can just add it to any any part of your clothing or surface of the fabric to create your own, mm -hmm. even just groundwork, okay? And so you're just laying it. We'll just pretend this is a collar. You're oh. laying it on here. Not really thick because now then you, you have a hard time going through it. And and you don't cut out the pattern piece because I did. It, oh, I you did. did. I 
thought I did before I got here, but evidently I didn't. Okay, so, so if we were making a collar, we're we making would cut a collar. out the collar piece. Right. And I cut, a, you know, I did That's cut this off. <laughs> <laughs> and you're laying it, so you're sandwiching the wool pebbles between the collar or fabric and the, wool sol and water the salt. Soluble. Got it. You have to pin it. There's no way. There is a water soluble stabilizer that has an adhesive, which is really nice for fabrics. But not so good if you have to maneuver here. All oh, of your wool pebbles yeah, it will be stuck. To it. Yes. Uh -huh. So pin them down, all the way around, and then just put them under your machine in free motion, and just start moving. Huh. Let the machine, the, the you know, you can drop the feed dog plates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if probably. you don't know how to do that, which I don't, I have never been able to find that button. <laughs> I put a piece of duct tape over the feed dog plate so everything moves very smooth. Uh -huh. You control it. I can. Yeah. So it's nice and controlled. Oh, and this is. It's kind of messy. It kind of. I'm not a quilter, but. I had a lot of fun uh -huh. doing it, and then they're sandwiched in here. And then we have to use water, obviously. We have to, to use water. Get rid of, does to get it just rid of soak? the soap. Put it in there. Yeah, you just put it in here. You remember when you were a kid and you took that Elmer's glue and put it in the palm of your hand and peeled it off? Uh -huh. I know I'm not the only one that did that. Right, I've, that's I've what done this that. reminds me of. I see. So it is some kind of adhesive. And because it has been sandwiched in between, it's not going to. Right. Ever come loose? No, then. and it melts mm -hmm. away. Now some yeah. of the pebbles might escape here and well, there. Uh huh. But then you get rid of it, and you've got oh, it's gone. Uh -huh. a collar piece. And so, do you throw this in the dryer then, or let it? Dry I let it dry naturally. Yeah, okay. I let it dry naturally. And then, if you want to put it on cuffs of your jacket, just cuffs, anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Purses, anything I can that think is so of. That's neat. Okay. And then the other um, technique, I suppose, you're going to show us is called catch and release. Catch and release. Uh -huh. All right. Let me get this heated up. All right. This is wonderful stuff. I love those pebbles. Now I'd like to I do know. that. That looks like <laughs> fun. <laughs> catch and release is exactly what it says. It catches the dye of the fabric and releases it with st steam and heat from the iron. So you're just taking a stencil and p it works on... I'd say just about any fabric, but especially natural fabrics wool, like cotton, cotton. wool. Uh -huh. In fact, let's just show this. I, I think this is amazing. In fact, this, this was, was a before, your... so you can get a kind of a look at what it looks like okay. just by itself. And this is wool. This is a wool felt. It's actually a blend of wool and rayon. It's what I use all the time. Wool and, and rayon yes. blend. Uh -huh. So your metallics, you can still feel a little bit. But the rest of it is part of the fabric. So whatever, we'll just pretend that you right. use, you, put, you put this down on it. Yeah, you take your foam brush and you dopple it on. Does it take a thick coat or is it no, thin? No, no, no. Okay. It, you know, just kind of makes sure it's wet. It. Doesn't uh -huh. even have to go all the way through. Every fabric has something underneath it that's been dyed over. So you I didn't know that. Do a test piece because it can be a disaster. Uh -huh. But to get these there. other colors, you put. Then that yeah, on. this is a catch and release with color. So I put fabric paint into here, oh. okay, and mix my own colors. And what it will do is the same thing. It'll remove the blue and replace the blue all in the same shot of the iron with that color. You're, not, you're, yeah. you're not going back and painting in what you removed. Yeah, I you're thought doing you just it all in it. one shot. Uh -huh. and see Let's how take... it becomes a part of the fabric. Uh -huh. Much because softer, it is really yes. it, it, this this is amazing this is a wool uh, as well yes it's wool Who and would rayon have thought that that was underneath this was the underneath hazelnut. it yeah uh -huh. it's beautiful it really is the um, one with the bamboo uh -huh. this is interesting because so, this particular piece has more than one dye in it oh. and so as you're going you can graduate in color and leave it the way you want i started out with green it goes to yellow it'll go all the way to white hmm. but it gives it a nice Variation. So um, you start out with the with this just, one first. That's all this was. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's unbelievable there. what's underneath there. And I can tell you right now, if it's bright red, it's bright yellow like McDonald's. So might want to mix a color. Mix. <laughs> You've done enough. You know what <laughs> yes, to look for. Yes. Yes. Isn't this that gorgeous? This is really pretty. Uh huh. And so just it's a way of creating your own fabric. Uh -huh. No one else will have Nobody that else design. Will have this one. Okay. Let's go ahead and show how. How we can do this. Uh, which one? This one this first? This one was a black sweatshirt. Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh -huh. And see how it's gone back to the feel of the fabric? It is. And it's then so the brown soft. one that you had the pebbles on the collar, mm -hmm. that also has been cut, caught and released and <laughs> added color in. Isn't that gorgeous? And it look, I really would have sworn you just painted that on. And the color that's under there is the blue. I could have swore it was going to be white. But see, the test huh. always tests. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, that, that's kind of fun mistakes, in itself. So. Yeah, and so that's the one. fun part. 
Everything's machine washable. It's eco-friendly. That's actually what's under the green. I didn't put the, any The color. yellow. Yeah. It's buttery yellow. It's pea soup green, so you kind of think, well, it probably does have a yellow base. Huh. Isn't that cool? Well, it really is. And so I've got a printed jacket without having to have buy printed fabric. And like you say, no one else will have one no like one, it. Uh -huh. No one will have it. So I did. This is uh, a just sweatshirt. Just a sample piece. It's uh -huh. just a sweatshirt. It may or may not work. It depends on the content of the fabric. Let's we'll soap it does, since we're doing Showing it live. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all cotton, I assume. Ah, uh, let's see. Or, yeah, 100% oh, cotton. No, it's not. It? No, no, it's 50-50 blend. Oh, okay, 50-50 okay. blend. Let's see. It'll probably do something. Hmm. So you got the steam. You want to put the iron right on it. Find your fabric setting, which I'm going to go with, go with the cotton. This is just the catch and release. Can you see it? Don't overfill your iron with water because if the water hits it before the steam does, it'll remove the okay. stuff that you just put down. But now where did you put the pattern? Is that under it? The pattern goes right on top of it. Oh, it goes on top of it. Oh, I see. Right there. And then we're going to dobble it with this. And then you painted this. it with the catch and release with your little foam brush. Correct. And then, then you let it completely dry uh -huh. and then you come back with your steam iron and you keep so that's kind of a whitish. Yeah, so that's what's uh -huh. underneath that Ivory. blue. Well, well, that's pretty. <laughs> yeah, and it worked. <laughs> it did. You, sometimes you just have to experiment, but isn't that gorgeous? So if you, okay, say you did that on a scrap, and that's what you realize. Right. But you really want to have pink in it. I put some right here, pink and oh. purple. You can also use it like a watercolor, where you're actually mixing the colors. Say I used my stencil here. Uh-huh. Okay, I doppled on the pink. Then I came over here and doppled, kept, just kept moving. Uh -huh. And then uh, they kind of mix together mixed and create together. a watercolor effect. Oh. Look a little more natural because we have lots of blue and purple leaves. Well, I was going to say, it, it also just <laughs> blends in with it the, does. Uh, the natural. Now, and they may be too light for you to see, but they should. There it goes. They're removing the blue, just like I did over here. Uh -huh. I should have just cut this apart. Removing the blue and then replacing that blue with the pink and the oh. purple or lavender. So you had just simply painted. That's why yeah. it was so pale. You can wow. even see where uh -huh. I, I wanted to make sure that you could see that it was actually removing the blue. Mm -hmm. So some places you just left yes. without anything painted on it. So you can, isn't that cool? And just fabric paint mixed with the catch and release. Let's hold that up. Just I must have had something over here. Wow. Didn't that come out nice? I never would have believed that it was under there. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you don't like the color under here, if you've already tested it and you know it's horrible, then you can go ahead and get your colors mixed yeah. and still use the fabric or the shirt. So that you're, you know. And for people like me that may not have access, like you said, to the pebbles and things like that, because you sort of carry all of these in your place. Right. Uh, this is a kit call, and I like the name. It's, oh my gosh, how did you do that? <laughs> and there's uh, seven to eight different techniques in here, patterns to follow, see. the catch and release, the tools that you need. Oh, Everything's here's a, all inclusive. The yes. Catch and release, that's beautiful. Uh -huh. Would you have guessed it was a sweatshirt? No, <laughs> not <laughs> hardly. And the, the water soluble yes, in here. Yes, everything you're going to um, need. This. And uh, even uh, one of the picks to yes. do uh, if you want to do the felting technique. Right, right. Wow. And your pebbles are in there. So gives you something to get started with. And, and you can do it this way and sort of see if you like it. Exactly. Before you have to go buy yards and yards exactly. of something. If That's you're not having like. fun doing something, don't do it. Don't do it. Well, this is amazing. I really appreciate well, you showing us you. how easy it is to do this. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to work with edger punches. We'll talk about a sports nutrition program called Eat Smart, Play Safe, and we'll show how to do vintage stump work by machine. One of my next guests is going to show a variety of border punch projects from scrapbook layouts to cards to home decor. Another guest is going to explain a program called Eat Smart, Play Safe. This is an educational campaign focused on promoting healthy nutrition and sports safety for active kids on and off the field. And we'll also talk about the origin of stump work, which was originally done by hand. Until now, my guest will demonstrate vintage stump work techniques by machine embroidery.
All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at Cheryl.Borden at ENMU.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6800 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information. And it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at KENW.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on the booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We'd also like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. Thank you.